Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've mentioned before that some lawsuits have been filed regarding the stay-at-home orders issued by governors across America. And there were a couple of lawsuits filed here in Michigan, both in federal court and state court. And I've reported on those. And I said, well, as they proceed, I will update you on them. A judge ruled yesterday on the state court one uh, that Michigan's stay-at-home order does not infringe on constitutional rights. Uh, I'm going to give you the story from MLive, which was passed on to me by Andrew uh, several people sent me different versions of the story. It's widely reported, Free Press, Detroit News. You can find this story online. But uh, a Michigan judge Wednesday found that the governor's stay-at-home order does temporary harm to the constitutional rights of Michigan residents, but the harm does not outweigh the public health risk posed by the coronavirus. So here's the deal. Um, many people think that your constitutional rights are absolute in that there's never allowed to be any infringement on them whatsoever. But most people know that there are allowed to be some infringements so long as there's a rational explanation for them and the harm doesn't outweigh the purpose of the statute. And I've had people say, Steve, that's crazy. Well, go talk to every single guy who's in prison right now whose right of liberty is being infringed upon for some reason. Okay, so there obviously are limits. So. Uh, an owner of an Oakland County landscaping business and four other Michigan residents had filed the lawsuit against the governor and other state officials, claiming the stay-at-home order infringes on their constitutional rights and they should be declared invalid. The mandatory quarantine and in-state travel restrictions violate due process rights. That was the gist of their argument. The Michigan Court of Claims Judge Christopher Murray ruled in favor of the government, uh, and that would be the governor, the attorney general, the Department of Natural Resources, and so on. Murray wrote a long opinion. He said, Our fellow residents have an interest to remain unharmed by a highly communicable and deadly virus. And since the state entered the union in 1837, it has had the broad power to act for the public health of the entire state when faced with a public crisis. The state home order was first put in place March 24th, suspending activities not necessary to sustain or protect life. And it has been extended through May 15th, Also, although some of the restrictions have been removed. So uh, things are lightening up. In case you're counting, Michigan's had over 40,000 people test positive, although testing has not been done widely, um, and it's resulted in 3,670 deaths as of the day that the court ruled. The owner of the business uh, is located in Farmington and Waterford. He's also part of a different lawsuit filed in federal court. That lawsuit also seeks a court order to end the stay-at-home order as well as financial damages, and that lawsuit is still pending. So I did not see the actual lawsuits, nor did I compare them, but I suspect that they are couched slightly differently because in federal court, you generally have to raise federal issues, which could be constitutional, and in state court, you're generally looking at state issues, and there's sometimes an overlap there. But um, the judge wrote that forcing the governor to end the stay-at-home order would not serve in the public interest. The plaintiffs in the Court of Claims case also attacked the Emergency Management Act itself for giving the governor uncontrolled arbitrary power. But the judge disagreed, saying the act lays out specific procedures and criteria for the governor to declare a state of emergency. And as I pointed out previously, that law has been on the books since 1945. Uh, The Attorney General said, I'm pleased with the court's decision. This pandemic has already taken more than 3,600 lives in Michigan and many more around the world, the primary goal of the stay home, stay safe order has always been to protect human life. Plaintiffs also argued that the governor should have only quarantined people who have the virus or impose restrictions on certain regions of the state. And I don't want to get political here, but you might realize that it's difficult to get tested. Uh, In fact, tests are still quite scarce. And I know that I know people who've gone to the doctor with symptoms and they said, well, we can't test you because you don't qualify for some weird reason. And so to suggest that we're only going to quarantine people who have tested positive, it's, it's kind of like, well, let's just close the barn door on the horses that have gotten out. So Monday morning quarterbacking is the role of sports fans, not courts, reviewing the factual basis, supporting executive action to protect public health, Murray said. Instead, it is the role of the executive and legislative branches to determine what steps are necessary and faced with a public health crisis. So those of you who are going to ask, I'll tell you. The next step in this process, quite likely, if these plaintiffs want to, they can pursue it up the chain of appeals, meaning they could file this, uh, an appeal with the Court of Appeals on this, uh, and they could wind it through the system that way. And um, 
They might get different results at different levels. You never know. That often happens. One of the most disconcerting things you learn in law school is you read a case, and sometimes you'll read the case to see what an appellate court said. Then you read the case to see what the state court of appeals said, or the state Supreme Court said. Then you read the case to see what the U.S. Supreme Court said, and you realize that it went this way, this way, this way. I mean, that happens all the time. The Glover versus Kansas case I talked about a couple weeks ago, but the guy who got pulled over because the truck he was in was registered to somebody with an a suspended license, which was him, but that case flip-flopped all the way up. It happens. But one thing that might cause, might cause the plaintiffs in this case to hesitate is that the judge who ruled yesterday on this case was an appointee of the previous governor, who was a Republican. So he was a Republican appointee. Now, Michigan is a strange state in that most of our judges are elected to their positions. You might say, Steve, how do you get an appointed judge? Well, judges get appointed to fill vacancies. And that's how we fill vacancies between elections. So if a judgeship becomes vacant, uh, the governor gets to uh, name an appointee and there's a process for that. And then they have to run for election at the next election. But it's not uncommon that people who get appointed to judgeships get reelected. I'm not sure what the whole story is on this guy, but I just know that I double checked because I, I was curious. I knew I was going to get asked that question. And the question is, you know, is the judge politically biased? And if so, First thing you ask is who appointed him if he's appointed. Turns out, appointed by the last governor who was a Republican. But again, I'm not trying to get all political on this. I'm simply trying to point out that this court ruled yesterday. Um, and there is still a pending case in federal court. And there are cases in other states around the nation. I've not addressed any of them yet. I might if they become uh, newsworthy. But the ones in Michigan obviously apply to me personally. Plus, I often know a little bit more about the cases because of the fact that I am an attorney licensed to practice law in Michigan. So if you want to comment on this case, uh, please feel free to do so. However, you've, if you post blanket insults aimed at me or anybody else in the story, and I don't think it's moving the ball down the field, um, uh, that probably won't move the ball down the field. So <laughs> there you go. But again, thank you, Andrew, for the story. Judge rules Michigan stay-at-home order does not infringe on constitutional rights, and he chose not to grant the plaintiffs the relief they were seeking. Taylor Desormo wrote the story, and Andrew passed it along to me. It's on MLive.com. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Every time I learn something new, it pushes some old stuff out of my brain.